Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 11 of the Hello World series of my ZHT assembly programming tutorials. And we're back on the CPC, and this is certainly unexpected because I was never planning on doing any more of these tutorials. We're going to be doing things differently today. We're going to be compiling the same Hello World example as before, but whereas in the past we've always used cross compilation, which is where we compile on, in this case, Windows, and then end up running on a different platform, in this case, the CPC, today we're going to compile it entirely on the CPC emulator. So this is going to be, um, we're going to use the CPC's native assembler, Maxam, to run our program. Now this is actually pretty easy because WinApe is designed with the same syntax as Maxam. So there's no changes needed to today's example to get it running. So we're just using the standard Hello World. Now there were various options for running Maxam on the CPC and we're going to try a variety of them today. We're going to try the Maxam 1 ROM, we're going to try the Maxam 1 disk and we're going to try the Maxam 1.5 ROM which also uses a separate text editor which I think is called ProText if my memory is correct. So we're going to try all three of those. That I think there was a Maxam 2 later as well but I believe it wasn't very popular. So we're going to just try these three and we're going to see different ways of doing things. We're going to run our program on the old CPC. So let's go over to our zoom window and let's see the CPC up close. So here we go. Okay, so here is our CPC emulator. Here's our good old CPC. And we're going to start by running the Maxim 1.14 ROM. Now you can get the ROMs and the disks from um, CPC Wiki. That's where I got them. And there's also the documentation. All we're going to do today is go to look at the absolute basics of getting a minimal startup and running a, a minimal example, just so you can know what, what to expect if you're going to try this out yourself. So first of all, we need to change the settings of our emulator and we need to attach the extra ROM, which is a memory option. So if we select memory here and then if we go here and we need to change one of these and I don't think it matters which we select, but we'll select this one and the um, mouse scroll doesn't work as we would probably expect there, but um, we, we can select maximum 114 here and that is the ROM I'm using and then we need to reset our machine. And if everything goes correctly, we should see a maximum message in our boot up screen here and that means the maxim rom has now enabled and this means we have a new command we can type in bar m or bar maxim if we feel like we're doing some extra typing for no apparent reason but bar m will now start up our assembler and this is the assembler options so we've got a variety of options here we're not going to look at them all we could but you can see there's a uh, disassemble list memory you know lots of stuff that you would possibly expect so what we are going to do here is we are going to use the text editor here and so we're going to select t here for our text editor and we're going to do e for edit text here so this is going to be uh, allow us to type in our program Okay, now there is a second option with this ROM, which is you can type the program in into a basic program and then assemble that, but we'll do that for the disk version. I'm not really sure which I prefer because I've only used this a little bit, but um, I think for if you're using the disk version, definitely doing it in basic is probably better because it means that you load less program into memory, save some time if nothing else. So we're going to type this program in and I'm definitely not going to use the auto type function. No one can see you cheat if you cover the camera. Okay, so that is our program typed in here. So if we just now press escape here, and then we select our assemble with A here, option A here for assemble text. So we will compile that. So our program has come up with a warning saying possible missing space. Uh, I don't know why it says that, but it's fine. So we will just ignore that warning. We will live dangerously and we will select J for jump to code. Now, this is how we actually run our program. Now, our program starts at memory address 4000. So if we type 4000 in here, our program will run and it shows hello world one, two, three. And that is exactly what our program was supposed to do. And that was what it did before. So it's working fine. So there we go. So that's how we can load and test our program from Maxim itself within the ROM. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll just change our memory settings here and we will remove that Maxim ROM and we'll just set it back to empty. And if we just press OK here and then we reset our emulator here, you'll see that the Maxim message has now gone. We are now Maxim free. So we will now try the disk version. So if we just go to drive a insert disk image here, and we just need to select our maximum disk here. This is the disk image we're going to use. So 
So if we just type in cat here for a catalog of the disk, you will see we've got this file disk.bass here. So if we just do run, quote disk, and hit enter, this will start up the Maxim program. Now we can speed things up with shift and four if we're impatient, but then that would be cheating a little bit. Okay, so now what we're going to do this time is we're not going to use the text editor. It does offer it, but we're going to skip it and we're just going to install the assembler monitor only. And this is of course going to load into memory. So I think by doing this, we're probably going to save some memory and also some loading time. Because of course the problem with using software like this is anytime we make a mistake and crash our machine, we're gonna have to do all of this again. So it's gonna be gonna get a bit of a pain. We're being asked how many bytes we want to reserve for our code. I'm gonna type in 2000. And we've now got the option type maxim to enter menu. Now, again, we don't need to type that. All of that, we can just type bar M. Uh, you can see here, we've got various options here, but what we don't have is we don't have the ability to run the text editor because the text editor editor hasn't been loaded into memory so we don't have it so what are we going to do well what we're going to do is we're going to type our program in into basic and what we can do is we can basically type in our program with an apostrophe at the start of each of our lines and then the rest of the text of our assembly program is effectively a um, comment in a rem statement and this will um, build up our program now the very first line of our program before the assembly should be the bar assemble command and this actually calls out to maxim which seems to detect all of the following lines as being an assembly program so that's what we're going to do and i'm going to type all of this in and i'm definitely not going to use auto type pay no attention to the auto type behind the curtain okay so there we go so we've typed in our program here and we've definitely not used auto type there so there is our program and now amazingly this is really quite funny all we need to do is type in run and it will now compile our basic program our assembly program and if you see here we've now compiled it so now all we need to do is do call and 4000 and we get our message we've compiled our program with the run command and then we've run our program with the call and 4000 command that's all we need to do very nice indeed very impressed with that so uh, yeah the, the disk version is perfectly capable it's just going to be a bit of a pain as i say if if you're like me and you crash your program all the time you're going to have to go to that menu reloading that off on that disk over and over again it's going to get very annoying so the rom would be the better one now we're now going to try Maxim 1.5 and with Maxim 1.5 again it's a ROM but they decided um, they basically got a very nice text editor and so I guess either because they wanted the extra ROM space to write a better assembler or because they wanted to sell two programs instead of one depending on your cynicism you may come to different judgments there but basically we're going to attach both of these ROMs so we're attaching the Maxim 1.5 ROM into this slot here and protect into the second slot I don't think it makes a difference which order they're in but we're just going to do it like that and then we're going to reset again and you can see we've now got two messages we've got the protex message and the max maxim 1.5 here message here so both of those are now running and what we're going to do here is we're going to type in bar p for protex i guess and we've now got this here now we can type help in here for a list of the possible commands and we can press escape to switch between command mode and typing mode but the first thing we want to do is we want to type in prog now this converts the program from a text editor which allows for formatting to a crude text editor which is more suited to programs and so what we're going to do now is we're going to type in our program and we're definitely not going to use auto type this isn't the auto type you're looking for okay so we're definitely typing in our program here and we're definitely not using auto type and now we've typed in our program and if we just press escape here and then we type in ASM, this will compile our program. So we are now compiling our program. Interesting to notice that the message about the missing space no longer appears here. So that's um, an improvement there maybe. And now we can just type in J. It seems we can't specify a memory address, but it seems to be able to tell from the compiled program where the program starts anyway. So if we just type in J here, we get hello world one, two, three. We have just run our program after compiling it and we're still in Protex now, of course. If we just do escape here and we do quit, 
and gets quit and then we're back in basic and we can now do call and 4000 if we prefer and of course we get the same result because all of this is compiled into memory now the other thing you will need to bear in mind with all of this is of course we're sharing our memory between all of these functions so when we're using all of this memory for our program well that memory is going to have to come for some from somewhere so um, if we just go here and we go to any and we get this into RAM mode here well if we browse through our RAM here you can actually see our program code in the low RAM here. Now that's not a problem when our program is running at memory address 4000, but it would be a problem if our program is running from memory address 100, which is another reason why using native assemblers like this is going to cause problems because you're going to have simply you're going to have to have your assembler and your source code in memory at the same time possibly and things like that. So it's not just a speed issue and the disk version was especially bad because this program originally compiled to memory address 8000 and that's where the assembler was in memory so it was it was refusing to assemble it because it would have wiped its own assembler. Anyway, there we go. So that's all we're going to be covering today. As I say, you can download the assemblers, all of those versions, and also the documentation from the CPC Wiki website. Please go and check that out. There's a link on my website. So um, if you want to have a go with this and do some assembly on a real CPC, please go ahead and give that a go. If you've liked what you've seen, please like and subscribe. Now, um, I'm sure a lot of people will ask me if, um, if I will consider doing this for other systems, and I'm afraid this isn't something I'm really planning to do for the simple reason a lot of the systems I'm covering, I'm not really very strong on, you know, systems like the ZX Spectrum and things, I can barely do more than load a program and often I have to look up the documentation to remind myself how to do things like edit disks and stuff. So I don't have the ability, the experience with these systems to do these kind of tutorials on the other systems without a lot of background research. And so if if you would like to see my content getting better over time and me covering more difficult things, you know, as the advert says, please consider backing me on Patreon because I'm not going to cover difficult topics on systems I've never even owned unless there is a basically a financial incentive for me to do so. So if, if you want to see the content become more um, challenging and more in depth on the, the, that kind of thing, you know, please do consider backing me on there. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.